it's Daryl Mack, and it's a Bible Minute with the Mac. It's diddly diddly D, and I'm bringing a good word to thee. <laughs> Hallelujah, y'all. And uh, we're coming out of the book of Haggai. And um, good prophet, man, all the prophets, man, um, were simply people God trusted, good friends of God that God could trust to give a message like someone could trust me to give a message. And I'm going to go give it the way God presents it and gives it to me. When the Holy Spirit gives me a Holy Spirit-driven message, I'm giving it to you just the way it's being spoken. I don't try to change it and rearrange it to come off like I want you to hear my message. No, I'm here to bring God's message, guys. And uh, and that's what we do. And this is what uh, Hey Guy is doing here in the book of Hey Guy is bringing a message to the people, uh, God's chosen people that were in exile in Babylon. Um, after they were freed, God wanted them to build a temple. The very same temple, actually, um, I found out um, that Jesus went in and flipped over the, the changer tables, um, you know, and let the, let the doves go where they were um, doing tax collecting, money changing, um, you know, all these different things. It didn't have nothing to do with worshiping God. And their full focus was on worldly things, right? And sometimes that happens to us. But it's the very same temple that, you know, here, hey, guys, telling the, the message to, from God to the people to say, hey, look, we're here to serve God, and your focus is this way, right? And not God's way. And we need this temple built. But it's the very same temple that Jesus went in and had the righteous anger. You know, it's okay as Christians. Somebody said, oh, you got angry. Yeah, I get angry over, um, you know, human trafficking. I get angry over people who didn't step up for me and my daughter when a lie from hell came against me. It's a righteous anger. It's not anger and um, hatred of the world. You have a, it's a righteous anger where you're um, angry for the right thing, not just some silly, oh, he cut me off, he didn't use the blinker, oh, he bumped, you know, his shopping cart hit my shopping cart. That's that's the big difference, man, between night and day, right? Praise the Lord. Now, the, this, the, the subject matter here is um, consider your ways. Um, these folks, um, Haggai is a trusted prophet, um, you know, who God gives a message or prophecy, and he delivers it to the people, not on paper, but verbally, right? And, and, and he did to the folks, and he was asking them to consider their ways, um, to build God's um, house, the temple, the very same one, like I said, that Jesus went in um, when Jesus was on his ministry and uh, was on a mission here for the Lord as well. I mean, doing his thing to show us the perfect example for all men to follow is First Peter 2.20. Uh, one speaks on and says, hallelujah, it says, I'm going to read the uh, intro in my Bible, it's a um, New King James Nelson Study Bible, Thomas Nelson, a great translation of God's Word, and it's taught me so much with the study notes, because I don't know it all, but God in me knows it all, and he's presented me with this Bible, and I suggest you get one, um, Thomas Nelson, a New King James uh, version, Nelson Study Bible, there's so many good translations out there, maybe some better than this or whatever, but this is really quality, quality translation of God's Word, and um, let's see here, yeah, it's motivation, guys, where's your motivation today, is it to serve you or to serve God, um, we got to consider our ways, are we on a path like I used to be for Daryl, and that was down the left, down the left way, because <laughs> left is wrong way, but we want to go right, no, we want to go straight ahead, and we want to follow Jesus, and as the apostles, like I said, uh, follow Jesus, we're following Jesus Christ spiritually with the Holy Spirit that leads the way where we need to be and what we need to be doing with our hands, right, and our mouth speaking, right? As Haggai was a good servant of God, a good friend of God, and trusted by God to give these messages to the people that were not paying attention to God. So Haggai was a prophet. We're all disciples. We're all um, messengers of God. We're all priests. The high priest is Jesus. We're all priests. We're all saints. We're marching on. The saints go marching on, right? And we're going to get this message out to you guys today. As Haggai gives a message to, um, to the to the um, people in exile there, God's chosen people, the Jewish people. And it's, it's a powerful message, man, considering our ways. Are we going down our path where we want to go, this way, this way, or even backwards? Or are we following the path that we need to be on for God? And we need to be walking this path, following the Holy Spirit to fulfill that perfect plan and purpose God has laid out for our lives. Just like God laid out for the, His Jewish people, His chosen people here that were in exile in Babylon. And I'm going to read this intro and we'll get into this. A uh, couple little study notes here. But it's a Bible Minute with the Mac. And um, it's, always, it's always a good time bringing God's Word to you guys. I don't know it all. I'm learning as I go along. I don't know everything. And I'm learning as I do the do these videos um they help me just as much as they help uh everybody out there so hey guy was a prophet it says here the intro to the to the book of hey guy it says to the jews had who had returned um from exile in babylon his first task was to force them to see their hearts and priorities really lay where they were really what their main focus was 
Where were they? You know, where did, you, where did your priorities and your hearts lay? In the world or for God? For themselves or for God? He urged them to do what um, they should have done from the start, to build the temple with a willing heart. To these abominations, he added the promise of God to, to, that would be with them, the promise of God to be with them. Um, with the promise, the people could return to their first enthusiasm and carry out God's purpose for them. Then their worship would be joyful and sincere and full of excitement. Guys, when you're uh, being obedient to God Almighty in heaven, man, the reward is pure joy, pure peace through it all, man. This cabin could fall down right now. Roof could fall on me. I'd sit here. Dust could be going everywhere. The walls down. Everybody might be looking like, what happened over there? I'd still sit here and finish this message if the camera didn't fall over. <laughs> I would have pure peace because and i have a, a spirit of fearlessness man i don't i don't um, test god with death but i don't fear death man could take my life right now but he can't take my soul and you know um when i go home it's going to be a glorious day so don't be sad for daryl um you know your brother here your friend whoever i might be to you um you know uncle uh, you know friend what, whatever it might be but be happy for me i'll be home with the lord um where we all want to be but back to the story and uh back to the program here um so consider your ways right and I'm going to go ahead and um, made a little study, little notes here. But it says, are you on the right path that God needs you on? You can ask yourself that question. Are you, on, are you on a path going down your own path, where you want to be, or where God needs you to be, doing what He needs to be done to fulfill that perfect plan and purpose and an assignment that He wrote out for you even before you were in your mother's womb, guys, okay? We need to be doing God's work. We're here to serve Him and bring the kingdom of heaven's wisdom, love, Hope, hope, and the message of salvation, everything good comes from up above that flows through every Christian out there, at least a Holy Spirit-filled Christian that's actually walking in the Spirit. And um, it's it's very important because when you're walking in the Spirit, now you're doing God's work. You got He's going to lead your steps to where your hands need to be working, to your mouth to be speaking. And it's very important, guys. The Holy Spirit needs to be leading the way, guys, in my life and your life, and this is what, what it's all about. See, God is leading, you know, God, God, uh, Lord God Almighty is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three different, but one Almighty God. Three different, uh, you know, um, qualities, or not qualities, but three different um, uh, people, right, but the same God. Like, I'm Daryl the preacher, I'm Daryl the father, I'm Daryl the uncle, right? Three different, but I'm still who? I'm still Daryl. So I have to fulfill those um aspects of my life to be who I am to fulfill my purpose in life and God had to come as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to do the same but we need to be led by the Spirit just like the Father led Haggai here with stuff then Jesus came and led the disciples with stuff and now the Holy Spirit leads us to where we need to be to get God's work done his stuff <laughs> if you will hallelujah now Get rooted, right? And invite. Get rooted deep, like a like a good um, you know, a plant or a tree, grounded, deeply rooted, a big strong tree, right? Deeply rooted in God's word. Get rooted in the Holy Spirit. Invite Him into every part and every area of your life, so you can have God's flowing through you to to lead you where you need to be, where you need to go. And you're not here by accident. You're not over there by accident. You're there. At a certain time when the red light ain't changing or it's going, all the green lights. You're there at God's perfect time. And we need, wherever you are, God's meant for you to be right there. But you have to call on Him to get that perfect message out. Get that perfect um, uh, duties to be done. To help somebody. To be there. To lift that bag. Or to help that, hold that door. Or do something. This is what it's all about, guys. Okay? Now, get deeply rooted. Invite the Holy Spirit into your life in all situations throughout your day. He will lead you. Um, your steps to be where you need to be, um, to be say, saying and doing, um, speaking what you need to do. God's work, guys, okay? Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to go to the book of Matthew really quickly, and we're going to bounce back to uh, the book of Haggai. Hey, guy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And uh, let's see here. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus, it's red letters, y'all. Hallelujah. Jesus is speaking. I get so excited, man. You have no idea. But, 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 speak, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. Praise the Lord, guys. It's amazing. Um, great scripture there. And it says, uh, seek the kingdom first down here in the study note. Um, means to desire God's righteous rule on this earth. We got to make God our main focus, guys. Seek the kingdom first in every situation. <clears throat> Seek God in every situation and let Him come and flow through you, guys. Praise the Lord. 
And I got a little lovely uh, uh, bookmark. Uh, Karina, my fiance, will be married here on um, December 12th. And uh, she hands these out with these beautiful little tassels on it. Part of her ministry is handing out God's Word and these beautiful bookmarks. Way to go, my sister in Christ, Karina, but more importantly, my best friend and my fiance and my wife, man. A virtuous woman that God has sent my way. But anyway, it says I can do all. All things through Christ who gives me strength. Philippians 4.13. Praise the Lord. I'm going to set that in there. And uh, we can, guys. Holy Spirit power. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, right? And we can fulfill God's perfect plan and purpose because he will lend you what you need when you need it to get her done. Get everything done. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to go here and read um, chapter uh, 2. And um, chapter 2 of... Uh, Let's see. Hey, guy. Let's see. Is that the right one? Uh, for, first, we're going to go to um, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. God wants you to consider your ways. Are you going down the path you want to go, which is of the world, which is of the flesh, which is no good, lead to sin and early grave, man? Uh, spiritually jacked up. Mentally, you will be jacked up. And now, because you're inviting demons in with sickness, smoking, drinking, partying, stealing, gossiping, anger, hate, whatever it might be, you're inviting these demons into your life. And we wonder, why can't we get things right? Well, we can get things right when we follow the Holy Spirit and do God's work and then put God first and everything else falls in place. Um, the study note on one five says, Consider your ways. The people were asked to maul over their habits and activities to ask whether their attitude was sensible before God. That's something you can ask yourself right now. Is your actions today, are your habits and activities um, good in God's eyes? That's a question between you and God. I'm just here as a messenger. Don't say, who does this guy think he is? Don't listen to Lucifer the liar when he puts these thoughts in your head as you watch these videos. I'm just a messenger just like Hey Guy was, trying to get people on the right path, man. You know, And it's up to you to take, um, if you're thirsty, and I, I'm, this message is like water. Are you, You're really thirsty out there. You, it's up to you. I'm going to set the bottle of water right there, like this message. You can take a drink if you want to. If you don't, I'm not going to be mad at you for not drinking. I'm just going to feel sorry for you being thirsty instead of taking a drink of these messages, this water. Jesus Christ, the living the living water, right? When you drink of him, you'll live, you know, you'll never thirst again. It means you'll have salvation. So I don't get mad or anything. Um, I'm just here to give God's message, man. I, I choose to pick up my cross and march on, man, and uh, get these messages messages out there to everyone guys i need them just as much as you do hallelujah all right here we go guys hey guy chapter 2 verse 4 says yet now be strong i'm gonna mess these names up like everybody messed my last name up <laughs> um Zer zarabel says the lord and be strong joshua son of joseph joseph Dad, the high priest and be strong and you and you and you strong Strong all you people in the land, says the Lord, and and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. Praise the Lord, guys. Now, you know, um, that's really powerful. Um, it says, yet be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. He's telling them, be strong, and be strong. Joshua, son of Joseph, Joseph, the high priest, and be strong. All you people of the land, says the Lord, and work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. He will make you strong. He will give you what you need when you need it to fulfill that perfect plan and purpose that he has put out for our lives, guys. And he's wrote out, because he's wrote out a script for me and you in this book. Every day, it's like turning the page in a book. What has God wrote out for? We can't read it, but it comes before us on a daily basis. God has written out a story for my life and for your life, and we need to fulfill that. And how do we do that? When you go to work today, wherever you go, or even coming home to your wife and you want to help out but you don't know where to start or what to do. And you go to your boss at work basically is a good example and say, hey, hmm, I don't really know what to do. Um, I'll just do whatever I want to do. Maybe get on your phone, turn the radio up, get some snacks. But, you know, you're on company time. You're on God's time. He's the boss here. Ask him, what do you need me to do, Father God? What do you need me to do, boss man? It's going to put you to work. You know what I'm saying? Great example. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. Now, for verse 4 here, it says, I am with you in the study note. The Lord's words to the people were the same as his great words to Moses in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 12. You can go read that. The words of this verse draw a comparison between events of this period and the events of the first Exodus. God brought the people back from Babylon out of exile, right? And he had brought them back to Egypt. The message to the first set of leaders, Moses and Aaron, and to the second, Zerubbabel and, Zerubbabel and Joshua, was the same. 
God would be present with them. No matter what, where you go, what you're going through, God is going to be with you guys, okay? Praise the Lord. It says, um, and finally, the mission in the promised land was the same, to build a place for true worship of God. And that's exactly um, what God wanted these folks to do, and it was um, Haggai's job to get them focused and get them to establish, um, you know, uh, their love for God and their focus back on God and to, to do what he's asking. Hallelujah. And get his perfect plan and purpose from the kingdom of heaven done down here to bring light down into this world of darkness, man. Of, of God's truth and reality from heaven down into this kingdom of Satan here of darkness and lie and fantasy world to help people. Not to judge them, but to help them to be happier at peace. Because you cannot see joy and peace and darkness. But the light of the world, Jesus Christ, came and showed everybody his love, peace, and joy. Everything with him. Hallelujah. Now, verse 9 says in Haggai chapter 2, The glory of the latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. Now, it says here, uh, in verse 9, study note, peace includes good health, well-being, and abundant life. The term speaks every, everything being as it should be. When we're obedient to God, guys, He has a hedge of protection around you. No virus, no parachute opening, not opening at 10,000 feet. Poof! You hit the ground, you walk away. Why did they live? Because it's not your time. And now, as you're in the presence of God, He only supplies strength, peace, comfort, joy, a good positive attitude flows from the kingdom. It's the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Go check that out. Only, only these good qualities in people can flow through God's Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't have God's Holy Spirit, which many neighbors here where I live and in your community and around the world, in this country and around the world, do not. They reject God's love, God's respect for other people, right, and His hope and His uh, salvation. And they're going into the pits of hell, and they're hopeless about tomorrow compared to having hope like we do into tomorrow because Jesus is coming any day. They don't have love in their hearts. Only when they need something, they call you or knock on a door or get in touch with you with a text message. Oh, yeah, hey, do this. Can you help me with this? Yeah, sure, you know, whatever, right? They only know you then. They love you then, right? But what have you done for me lately when you don't help them, right? Praise the Lord. They forget um, all the other things, right? Praise God. It's another video. <laughs> but they, they don't have hope. They don't have no love. They, they selfish, um, you know, instead of selfless, um, they're hopeless instead of having hope, and they hate instead of love. And this is where this Holy Spirit flows. But if not, you're, we were all born into this flesh and this generational curse because of Adam and Eve's mistake in the garden. Chapter uh, twenty, uh, chapter 5 of Galatians, right before these fruit of the Spirit verses, 22 and 23, 19 and 21 represent everybody out here who doesn't know the love of God and still have the hatred of Lucifer in their, in their heart that we're all born into. You need to be reborn through the blood of Christ and His Holy Spirit comes upon you. God's Spirit lives within you. Now you got God's law and His characteristics flowing through you. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, we're going to go to 13 says, verse 13, and the people are defiled. Now, Haggai said, if in uh, verse 13, chapter 2, and Haggai said, if one is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, it will be unclean. Now in 14 it says, oh I'm sorry, let me read, finish reading 13. So the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. Let me read that again. 13 says, verse 13, And Haggai said, if anyone is unclean, is unclean because of a dead body touches any of these, it will be unclean. So the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. 14 says, then Haggai answered and said, So, so is the, this people and this nation before me, says the Lord. So in every work of their hands and what they offer, there is unclean. When we're sinning, guys, um, Haggai's saying here, these people are sinners and they're unclean and you know they need to repent before they build the temple for God. We need to repent before God. When, and the forgiveness is there. We just have to put the pride aside Focus on the Lord. Fear Him means not be afraid of Him. In the end, you should be if you don't have Lord Jesus Christ. But um, be, respect. Respect Him. But far as the unclean hands touching and doing the temple's work, He don't want that. This is why David couldn't build the temple because his hands were dirty with blood. And he wanted King Solomon to build the temple for him. 
his son, King Solomon, built a temple for God. But these people's hands were unclean, and he didn't. He's telling them that. And here's the thing, and it says right here the, the little note I wrote. The Holy Spirit gives me discernment to write down things. So for this, if if we sin in our lives, we contaminate our kids, our family, our friends. Sin is a sickness, guys. Like hachu, a cold. I can pass that on, right? And people can get sick. Same analogy right there, right? Now, demons from sin cling to us and cling to their family members. If I sin outside and bring sin into this home, then then Karina's going to, my wife, my soon-to-be wife here in a few days, will be subject to those demons of sin. We bring the sickness into our house. When we sin, our children are cursed. Scripture says that as well. So just know that. When you sin, repent and make things right with God before you come around anybody or anything. But make it right in God's eyes. And then life and everything else will be right, guys. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Woo! Got me. He's coming through me, boy. Woo! Man, it's like getting electrocuted without the pain. It's just excitement. <laughs> woo -hoo! Oh, man. Hallelujah. Now, back to the program. So that's just what happens. Sin is contaminating and bringing demons. And when we sin, we bring demons along with us, whether in our homes, um, in our neighborhoods, the country, now the world is full of sickness, of hatred, and, and Christians are evil because we speak truth and reality of God. This is why we're dangerous because we bring truth and love into their lie and hatred world that we were all born into, this dark system of Satan. Do you see what I'm saying? Praise God. Now, just repent. God's grace is with us all. God's grace is God's redemption at Christ's expense, right? Through Jesus' blood, we're forgiven. Ask for repentance. God doesn't see your sin anymore. He just sees your precious blood of Jesus on you when you when you ask Jesus Christ into your life as your Lord and Savior. But even as Christians, we mess up, stumble, and fall. But we got to get back up and say, I repent, Jesus Christ. Wash me clean of this sin, whatever it might have been. That's between you and God. But make things right with God. Because if you don't repent and you try praying, sin sin will keep God from hearing your prayer. Repent. Repentance. Now you're clean again. Now the friendship is open wide now again. God is hearing your prayers. But God turns a deaf ear to sinner's prayers to everyone out there who might have sinned today and wonder why God ain't hearing these prayers. Why ain't nothing happening? You must repent and then pray. Repent, then pray. Repent, then pray. Say, sorry, Lord. We can't be sinners and expect God to do us favors. We have to respect God like we respect people. Respect the creator of the people, God. Put God first and everything else falls in place. Now, 16 and 17. Well, let me go down to the study note here. Um, for 13 and 14. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The flesh gets in the way. I get excited. Woo! And uh, it's a lot of excitement flying through me, and the Holy Spirit contains my excitement because if I was on a basketball court or football field, I'd be all on you. <laughs> all game long. I don't get tired, man. I just keep coming and coming and coming. The Energizer battery uh, uh, bunny comes up to me and asks for extra energy. <laughs> People said, Do uh, you drink energy drinks? I said, No, they drink me. <laughs> but back to the program here. Hallelujah. Now, Verses 13 and 14, it shall be unclean. The priests were asked if a religious unclean person, someone who had touched a corpse, um, could contaminate someone else by touch. The answer was yes, right? It says the people had worked hard to rebuild the temple, only to be told that, that their worship would be unacceptable in the New, test, in the new, in the new Temple because they, they built it with dirty hands. The existence, and God hates the sin but loves the sinner, but the sin is filthy. The existence of the temple itself guaranteed nothing. The hearts of the people had been in harmony with the sacrifices they've been they they being was sacrifices being made. Um, all they were worried about was doing their blood sacrifice, but they weren't in true repentance. Now, seventeen, sixteen, and seventeen say in the study note here. Um, let's see what it says up here. Uh, sixteen and seventeen in the scripture says, since those days. When one came to heap a twenty effins, they were but ten. But then came to the wine vat to draw of fifty baths from the press. There were but twenty, struck with the blight and the mil and the mildew and hail in the labors of your hands. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Now the study note says here, you did not turn to me, despite God's acts of withholding blessings. Right. 
Um, you know, because when you're disobedient, God doesn't reward bad behavior. He rewards good behavior like any good parent or guardian should. But even though God was blocking their blessings, these people still had not turned back to him fully. They were just suffering and suffering and suffering. And they were good with that, you know, instead of doing what's right. Because sometimes you get so distant from God, you think you can't come back to him. But he's always there with his hands wide open, ready to hug you because he loves you. Like the prodigal son got his inheritance and left out early and spent it all up. But his daddy was standing there. It's a parable. Uh, earthly example with a heavenly meaning is a parable and the father's always waiting just like the a prodigal son's dad was waiting there father god is waiting for you to repent but don't keep going through life missing out on so many blessings guys it, it's just it's just not fair you know to you your family god loves you jesus died for you and he loves you man just repent guys and make things right pick up your cross now don't leave it lay there and walk away from it fall down next to it and repent and ask, Father, I want to be with you, Father, but I'm going to repent. Jesus, wash me clean. I'm sorry, Father God. And now pick the cross up. Say, Father, what do you need me to do? Holy Spirit, have your way. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the book of Daniel, guy. And, and guys, and uh, obedience is better than works. I can do a thousand videos, right? And go, yeah, all right, I'm doing God's work. But then I'm out drinking, smoking, partying. Father God rather have me not do the videos and not drink, smoke, and party and spread rumors and gossip and hatred. He'd rather have you being obedient like any good parent wants their child or guardian, wants their child to be good. Father God just wants us good. Why? Because it's good for us. We feel good because when you do bad, there's no reward in that but sin. And sin causes mental issues, health issues because you run to drugs and drink and to try to soothe the pain that you're feeling from the sinful life. Hallelujah. Daniel chapter 2 verse 44 says, And in the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall, be, it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and what it stand for, and what, what it shall stand for. And the study note here says, and for verse 44 I just read, and you can go read these for yourselves, you know, um, hearing me read or any other preacher read or whoever, anybody ministering to somebody or just reading their Bible scriptures, listening to them on the radio or through the apps, it's like watching someone else eat a plate of food. You can't get filled watching somebody else fill up on food, eating the food. you got to go fill up on God's word. Eat the word yourself, fill up on God's truth. There won't be no room for Satan's lies. Now, the kingdom shall never be destroyed is the kingdom of God. There is at least two views at this, what... As, as to what form this kingdom will take. Um, any millennialist suggested it's a spiritual kingdom introduced by Jesus Christ at his first coming. Pre-minimalist millennialist suggest that is is a literal literal kingdom to be established by Jesus Christ at the second coming is exactly what it is. The false teachers teach something else. It's spiritual. At the same time, he will destroy the kingdoms of this world. Everything will be crushed here, guys, and it will be crushed in a big way. Get right with God. Get right with Jesus Christ. It's the only way to the Father. He, the, what, the one true living God. It's a relationship, not religion. Religion killed Jesus. So, with this being said, guys, it's a physical kingdom that we'll be living in. It's a physical body that we get. A physical body, right? Like Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he wasn't a spirit like some false teachers teach out here, the religious people who won't lead you into darkness, away from the truth, because they don't want you to know God. They don't want you to know his power because they want to be God. They want the power over you to get your money. That's all it's about. The Catholics, the Muslim, the uh, Mormons, and the Jehovah Witnesses, four riches religious cults in the world that stole my father's word and tried to make it their own and it, any any one of those four four religions go talk to somebody they're like robots think 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 being controlled by men with a remote control what they're following man not jesus and the thing is here's the important thing there's no excitement there at any of their worship service i've been at all, uh, every one of them but the mormon and when i met two mormon brothers the other day at subway no excitement there they had a smile went right back to like like, no excitement there. None at all, man. It was fake. Um, wasn't real. They were putting on a little act because the Holy Spirit is not flowing through them because they're out preaching and promoting the devil's lies of man-made 
God's um, God, the man who took God's word and tried to make it their own. So there's no excitement there. True excitement is being in the presence of God like I am. And I'm not perfect. I'm not better than you. I'm just happier than you. Praise God, right? Wow. And that's King David went dancing in, right? Woohoo, right? With the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. That's a Holy Spirit filled. That's a man with the presence of God right there and a friend of God. And you're happy and excited when you're walking around promoting the truth and reality of God, not lies and fantasy messages of Muhammad and Joseph Smith looking in a hat for the Mormons and this false teaching and um, the Jehovah Witnesses Watchtower Society. Um, they have the perfect relationship with God in Brooklyn, New York. It's, it's all foolishness, guys. God, the one true living God, the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. Jesus was before any of these people I mentioned, any one of their teachings, and the, the false teachers who claim to be Jesus now and push Jesus out of the way as nobody. Jesus is somebody. He's the one true living God. He's our Savior, and if you want to get into heaven, that's how you get in there. But follow Jesus, put God first, and everything else falls in place, guys. Fulfill that perfect plan and purpose. And before I leave you, the Holy Spirit says... Consider your ways today. Are your habits and activities promoting God and making God happy? Or are they promoting yourself and making you happy? When you, when you make yourself happy, that's sin. There's no reward in that, man. But when you reward and you get rewarded big time, when you put God first and fulfill His plan and purpose, you might not be rich in your pockets, but you're rich spiritually. These people are all spiritually bankrupt. And you know how it is being bankrupt with no money. You feel miserable, this and that. Those four groups I named, they're all like that. From my experiences with all of them, I've experienced every person out there in these different religions. No excitement. They shun you. They hold you on the outside of their worships. Um, they look down at you and this and that. And it's all about that. But God, we receive everybody as Christians. We love everybody. I love all those people. They're just lost. They're in the dark. My heart breaks for them. And just because I speak truth and reality, God, I'm not judging you. Truth is love and truth has a name. It's Jesus Christ. Love has a name. It's Jesus Christ who flows through me. This has been a Bible Minute with the Mac. Okay, Bible Minutes. <laughs> Bible Hours with the Mac. I don't know how long this is, but I'm letting the Holy Spirit flow. And it's just a lot of fun. But remember, guys, consider your ways. Put God first. Let the Holy Spirit flow through you. Get God's perfect purpose and plan fulfilled that He needs you to do. And you will have joy and peace. And riches now, spiritually, you feel just, man, wow, unstoppable and great no matter what's going on. No matter what people say or do, I feel great every day. Don't you want to feel the same way? And then we got heaven, paradise, on its way. The best is yet to come. So consider your ways, guys. Are they for you or for God? For you, depression, anxiety, addiction. For God, strength over all of that stuff. Peace, pure joy. Peace be with you. I love you. Talk to you soon. This has been a Bible Minute with the Mac. Diddly diddly dee. And I just brought the good word to thee. Hallelujah. <laughs>